In the 1950s, with World War II a recent memory and the jet age just on the horizon, airlines were beginning to face a problem as passenger numbers steadily climbed. Existing paper-based manual reservation procedures were woefully inadequate to meet rising passenger demand, and a new solution was needed to accommodate growth into the jet age. Flying to far-off places in this jet age is simplicity itself, but communications, recording the comings and goings of millions crossing the national frontiers of the world, must be maintained. What does it all add up to? Communications across the world in three seconds. Thanks to advancements in technology from the war, computers were beginning to find a wider variety of uses. With the help of early computer pioneers, airlines built the first civilian computer networks to speed up the reservations process with instant access to accurate flight information, positioning key players for future success. The reservation process relies upon matching a seat on a plane to the record of a passenger's personal information. An agent making a manual reservation would first consult a display board in their office to see if space was available on the requested flight. If there was, the agent would take down the passenger's name, address, and phone number to be stored on a card as the passenger name record. Next, the booking information was sent to the departure city to decrease the inventory for the flight and relay passenger information. Once a flight was full, a stop sale notice was sent out from the departure city to all reservation offices so they could update their flight availability boards. This method was time consuming, resource intensive, and prone to frequent data inconsistencies, resulting in flights becoming over or underbooked because it was unable to directly link seats sold on a flight to a passenger record. American Airlines, with the help of Teleregister, in 1946 began testing an electronic reservizer system designed to keep inventory on flights. It allowed for remote reservation agents to query the system and instantly know if space was available before making a reservation. Ready for use in 1952, the magnetronic reservizer used magnetic relays and vacuum tubes to create a fixed logic system. This was an electronic system that could be used to keep inventory for flights only. Reservizers were unable to be programmed for other functions, limiting their use and scale. Reservizer systems quickly caught on with other airlines worldwide and allowed for near instant access to seat availability, but it was still unable to solve the problem of linking that seat to a passenger name record. In 1953, an IBM salesman named R. Blair Smith boarded an American Airlines DC-6 from Los Angeles to New York on his way to training for the IBM 702 computer. Seated in the back of the plane, he conversed with his seatmate talking about his previous work at Western Airlines and his current employment with IBM. Mr. Smith soon learned his seatmate was another Mr. Smith, C.R. Smith, CEO of American Airlines as introduced by the flight attendant. Mr. Smith of IBM quickly put on his salesman hat. He had knowledge of how manual airline reservations worked from his time with Western Airlines. As an IBM salesman, he had knowledge of American's new magnetronic reservizer inventory system. Putting the pieces together, Blair let CR know the computer he was going to New York to train on could allow more than inventory tracking. It could also maintain a record of the passenger's name, itinerary, and phone number. CR, a shrewd businessman, knew the limitations of his current reservation system and was instantly intrigued by a computer that solved the problem of linking a passenger record to a seat. He invited Blair to tour the reservation center at LaGuardia Airport once his class completed in New York. After doing so, Blair recommended a joint research and development project between IBM and American Airlines birthing the five-year Sabre project to develop a centralized computer reservation system with remote access terminals. A few years before that fateful American flight, TransCanada Airlines had found a similar need to utilize computers as the solution to their reservation problems. The Ferranti Mark I computer at the University of Toronto, colloquially known as Ferret, was programmed in 1953 by TCA and Ferranti Packard to hold the airline's entire schedule. It was the first attempt to use a general-purpose programmable computer for airline reservations. Such a computer was different from reservizer-based systems in that the hardware could be used for other purposes than inventory for airlines. 
In the first stage of testing, some serious input-output problems were identified with the teletypewriter interface. As reservations agents were more accustomed to taking notes on paper with pencil while making a manual reservation, Ferranti Packard shifted development towards a punched card approach. By 1957, the Transactor Remote Interface Unit was being prototyped and tested. Successfully resolving the input-output problems from the first test, TransCanada Airlines contracted with Ferranti Packard to develop a computerized reservation system with the punched card transactor terminal in 1959. When Reservec came online on January 24, 1963, an agent taking a reservation would fill out the transactor card much like one would when filling in bubbles on a multiple choice test answer sheet. On this card, a sale request is being made for Mr. and Mrs. M. Phillips, with two first-class seats on TCA Flight 6, departing Toronto and arriving in Montreal on June 7th. After marking the card in pencil, the agent inserted it into the transactor slot in their desk. The transactor scanned the card and communicated the data over telephone lines to the central computer, which then processed the request before sending back a response. Within about two seconds, the transactor receives the response and punches it into the inserted card. In this instance, sold indicates the space was available and booking is complete. The key limitation with Reservec was that it could not maintain a complete passenger name record. Only the first two letters of the last name and the first name initial were stored in the computer. The rest was kept on a physical card at the local reservations office. This limitation would not be addressed until after the airline took on its modern name of Air Canada. As the Canadians were developing the punch card-based Reservec, the Americans were going for a teletypewriter-based system that would finally match the passenger name record to a seat on a flight. The Sabre joint research project between IBM and American Airlines ended in 1958 when the two officially signed a contract to develop the system. IBM was able to leverage experience gained developing the Sage Defense Computer to solve problems Reservec could not overcome and exceed its overall capability. Using a typewriter for input of a passenger's variable details, Sabre would finally link the seat on a flight to a passenger's record containing the full name, phone number, special requests, and any car or hotel reservations of the passenger. With Sabre development moving into the 1960s, IBM executives wanted to be sure they were not spending all their time on a system that could only be used by one airline. To ensure they had a scalable, saleable product, IBM started working with two other airlines with different computers in different ends of the market under the Sabre umbrella. At the time, Pan American World Airways was an international airline with a worldwide network, and Delta Airlines was a regional carrier limited to the Southeast United States, a far cry from the global status Delta enjoys in 2020. IBM was able to scale Sabre from American 7090 to use with Pan Am on their 7080 and Delta on their 7074 IBM mainframes, proving they had a successful product worth further development. Because other airlines were now using the same technology, American could no longer claim the Sabre name for themselves, so they opted to move two letters around naming their instance of the system Sabre, while Pan Am chose Panamac and Delta went with Deltamatic. Despite having to share the glory with other airlines, American was able to get Sabre online in 1964, ahead of Panamac and Deltamatic in 1965. Remote ticketing agents interacted with Sabre reservation computers in a workspace consisting of the agent terminal, director console, and air information device. When taking a reservation, the agent would place a specially punched root information card into the air information device that contained information about all active flights between an airport city pair. The agent would use buttons on the air information device that corresponded to rows and columns on the route information card to select a given flight in the computer. They would then use the director console to input the date and number of seats through a selection of hardwired buttons. Finally, using the agent terminal typewriter, the passenger's variable information, like name and phone number, would be entered into the computer. The information was transmitted in real time over dedicated telephone lines at speeds up to 2.4 kilobytes per second. The Sabre-based systems provided agents the ability to search for passenger information by name 
and the computer was able to provide logic-based error suggestions should there not be an exact match on the flight. When IBM proved Sabre could be used with more than one airline, other competitors started popping up. While Ferranti Packard created the punch card Reservec for TransCanada Airlines, they would not continue development of the system. Univac computers became the primary competition to IBM and Sabre, beginning development of the Beacon reservation system for British European Airways in 1963. United Airlines saw the need for its own computer reservation system to compete with American Sabre by 1965. They contracted with Univac and tried to develop a system that could outstrip what IBM was capable of delivering at the time. When Univac computers were unable to deliver adequate results, United was forced to withdraw to a basic seat inventory system on their Univac computers and kept up the search for their ideal system. Univac was able to learn from its mistakes with United, bringing airline reservation systems online in Europe starting with BEA Beacon in 1966 and Air France Alpha 3 in 1970. Univac would even develop Reservec 2 in 1970, upgrading Air Canada's computers for full passenger name record integration. With competition cropping up around them, IBM needed to quickly build up from Sabre. In order to keep competing in the market of airline reservations, they would need to develop software for their next generation of computers, System 360. PARS was developed as a generalized reservation software for airlines, based on the new computer environment. While PARS was in development, Qantas had become an early adopter for the IBM System 360 to address their needs for computerized reservations. They would work with IBM to develop the first System 360 reservations instance on their computers, providing the basis for the internationalization of PARS, with BOAC creating the first IPARS instance. PARS was perfect to allow mid-size airlines an entry point into computerized reservation systems, with installations beginning in 1968. At the time it was releasing, Eastern Airlines was one of the largest airlines in the United States and decided to use PARS as a starting point for their reservation system, working with IBM to adapt it for a larger airline. Eastern-based PARS, as it became known in the industry, would be a PARS variant designed for larger airlines and was closely watched by competitors in that segment of the market. With Eastern's success, PARS became the new industry standard in 1970. United Airlines saw PARS as the answer Univac could not deliver and used it as the basis for their Apollo system. TWA also adopted PARS and kept the name public facing while American and Delta updated their Sabre systems that same year with agents enjoying the upgrade to video display units over typewriters. Early computerized flight reservations were revolutionary for both transportation and information. With the adoption of the computer, flight schedules and passenger information was digitized for quick, easy access by any terminal on the network. As these networks expanded to include other airlines, it soon became possible for a passenger to compare flights easily and book based on price. Airlines embraced the new computer technology to fuel their expansion with early passenger jets, like the Boeing 707, during the dawn of the jet age. To learn more, watch our related video on the subject by clicking here or on the link in the description. In an upcoming video, we will examine the effects that digitizing flight information had in the rise and fall of the travel agent. As airlines with the technological infrastructure raced towards retail automation amid deregulation, computerized reservations evolved into global distribution warfare, with American and United leading the charge. We take the time to research our videos right, so you don't have to, but you can if you want to as our sources are located in the description. A subscription to this channel is free and helps us grow while you stay dialed in to the latest videos providing in-depth analysis on civil aviation topics. We like the people who like our videos and welcome any feedback you may have in the comments below.